Hey everyone, five things that you should never do with your designer items, particularly when it comes to storage and when it comes to care. I'm gonna, the five tips, I don't know why I've never mentioned them before. I want to mention them now because I've actually ruined about three different bags doing what I'm about to tell you, or yes. So I'm gonna tell you, and my hope is that at the end of this video, for any of you who have got anything that in lockdown is, um, is stored right now, that you go and check on things, and that you make sure your stuff's in good condition and good order. Also, this, the tips I'm gonna give you are not the kind of thing that are only relevant to those of you who have got a bag or a couple of items or a whole wardrobe full of stuff. It's even relevant to those of you who watch just because you enjoy the videos but you have no intention of buying designer bags. Let's say you're into your artisan leather pieces and th this also goes for you, okay? The first thing I want to talk about specifically is designer shoes. There are things that certain brands do in respect of the sole on the bottom of the shoe. The thing they do, and it depends on the exact brand, and actually I've noticed it also depends on the style of shoe, but a lot of them that you will buy will, straight out of, let's say, Chanel or Dior or anything like that, they will have this kind of sole on them, which is an, an untreated calf skin, I think it is. It feels really soft. It feels like a chamois leather. Problem is when they do this, they always suggest when you buy these shoes that you go straight from the shop into the cobbler. But honestly, who's gonna do that? You've just bought a pair of shoes. You wanna go and wear them. You don't wanna have to put them in at the cobbler and wait sort of five days to go and get them back again. If you do not do that, here's the problem. In my experience, you can get a couple of wears out of an untreated sold shoe. If, let's say you've bought these and you've got some event you're going to and you don't have time to go and get them resold. It's fine, I think, for one, to four wears, but any more than that, you risk damaging the shoe because that sole is so delicate that these wear through quicker than your average shoe. If you're gonna get these resold as well, one thing I wanna tell you, one really good tip, sometimes when you go to a cobbler, they put a really unattractive, they sort of slap an old sole on the bottom of it and this bit will all be black and then you'll have that line there and then this bit will stay the, the whatever color it is. There is one thing now that not every cobbler does, but I'm gonna show you it anyway, because if you wanna keep that look underneath, there's a permanent sole that you can get now that comes in transparent or in near enough any other color you can think of. And the best way to demonstrate it is on the bottom of these shoes. Now, way back in sort of t uh, 2016, uh, 2017, I used to buy Christian Louboutin a lot. And one thing I noticed with them is that if, if you don't do anything with that sole before you go and wear it, it's not like that where it doesn't really matter. If you go and do that, I'll show you what it looks like. Because that sole is quite, um, well, it's just leather with a really thin, I don't know if you can see, there's a really, really thin coating of red paint over the top of it. I know these look disgusting, by the way, but this is real life, I've worn them. What can I do? If you keep wearing these, because that leather is so soft, you can end up damaging the shoe in a way that becomes quite difficult to correct. If you have pointed toe shoes, that actually is one instance where I probably wouldn't want to wear them even once before getting them done. Can you see on these? I'm hoping you can. There is um, a tiny tip that I had put on the end. I actually took these straight to the cobbler after buying them and they just put that on the end for me. I haven't had any of the rest of it done and that's really been great at protect protecting the end of the toe. That's shoes. Now, shoes aren't so much of a pressing issue right now, depending on your level of lockdown wherever you live because you're probably not really going out that much and you're not really wearing this stuff. So that's fine. Something, however, that is probably, if you've got stuff that right now in your home is in storage because you're not using it, these tips that I'm gonna share with you probably are things that you're gonna potentially wanna go and check up on. The first thing is to do with patent leather. Patent leather, in my experience, needs to be stored in slightly uh, more care than your average normal uncoated leather. 
Patent leather is essentially leather that's got a artificial gloss coating over the top kind of like a man-made thing that's painted over the top. That's what gives it that glassy finish. The problem is with that top layer is that it's really prone to dye transfer, color transfer. Even on here, I don't have any transfer on the bag itself, but on the handles very slightly, there is a tinge on there where I hold the bag. When it comes to storage with patents, make sure that you don't do two things. First of all, if you have a bag where the handles, let's say they flop down and they actually touch the patent. I'm gonna show you this. This is a bag that I owned some years ago now. Um, and the handles on it, I don't know if you can see, and that piping rested onto the verni, which is a patent leather as well. Now this didn't, this could have gone a lot worse for me than it actually did. As the handles were resting, onto the patent leather when i hadn't used that bag in ages and when i went and looked at it there was a really really faint red curve stain on the actual bag from where the dye from the handle <laughs> had been sitting on the actual patent for so long that it had slightly absorbed so if you've got a bag that does that go and give it a check on Keep the handles up. If the handles fall down and you can't keep them up, it's fine. Wrap the handles in a tiny bit of tissue paper. But if you're gonna do it, I would still recommend that you give your bag a check on because of this next final thing, which has happened to me. And I have one thing that I'm gonna demonstrate it with. Because of that top layer I was telling you about, the patent gloss leather finish. Leather goods pretty much can last, in some cases, they're a one-time purchase. Slightly different though when it comes to patents because that top layer after a while, I mean I'm talking after years here, but it can start breaking down. And you know it started to break down because it goes ever so slightly sticky and tacky to the touch. That is caused by A, age, and B, something that can speed that up overnight, is storing the bag in an area where there is little airflow, air circulation, and any kind of dampness at all. That's what happened to this wallet. So this wallet I bought back in 2008, I would say that um, two or three years later, after I'd stored it for maybe about six months, I took it out one day to use it and it was all sticky and I was like, oh, what is this? And even, I'm gonna let you listen here, even the flap when you lift it makes this horrible sort of sticky ripping noise a bit like velcro where it's so stuck down and that is because i stored that wallet in a stack so i had a stack of wallets and in between each stack i had the car the, the dust case so that wallet wasn't actually resting against anything else if they don't have feet by the way and you're storing them let's say on a surface like this that's fine um, just make sure that they stand on a dust bag, give them a check every so often. Don't store them anywhere where there is direct sunlight either because that will bleach the colour and you'll end up, particularly if the sun comes through and it kind of cuts halfway through and it's like it every day, you'll get like a little shape on your bags. Indentation. Two bag examples. This bag, which I don't like for many reasons that I've spoken about before, but this bag has mucked up a couple of other bags that I've had in the space where I store them. And what it's done is not unique to this. It just so happened that this was the bag that did it. If you have got any bags or items that have got thick chains, maybe even like this where it's got a, a logo that sticks out and this is metal, what can happen, and it's happened before, Thankfully, I rectified it in a way that I'm gonna tell you about in a second, but you can't always. I had stored two bags, including this boy bag. I had stored them together, and it so happened they were touching, or I think this one had fallen onto it. And that metal strap dented the leather of the bag that was next to it. I mean, really badly. I left that bag out all day and the denting didn't resolve itself. I actually did find a tip online, uh, which is that you use a hairdryer on a really, 
on like a warm setting and you really gently warm the leather where the dent is and then you kind of massage the leather slightly and it can lift out the final thing so this is another thing that i did in the past when i first started my collection and i ruined two bags doing this when you store your bags sometimes or most of the time when you buy them they are stuffed with tissue paper so they keep their shape i personally due to what happened to me i would recommend against storing the bags with that tissue paper on the inside because here's what happened i had done that with a bag in question that i haven't used in a long time and when i took out the tissue paper to use the bag i mean this was after months the bag um, smelled quite musty and the tissue paper from where the bag had been stored in an area that apparently, although it didn't feel it, must have had some dampness in the air. The tissue paper had almost absorbed that and had further attracted, I would say, to the bag moisture and had made the inside smell a bit musty. I was able to air that smell a bit, but that smell was always there. One of the other things that I've tried before in bags that haven't come with that tissue lining is I have used bubble wrap to, so that when I store them, they keep their shape. And I particularly do this in uh, Louis Vuitton canvas pieces or even Gucci canvas pieces because with two bags I've got from those brands in particular because that canvas is material with a coating over the top. Again, with those after a while, that coating can start to break down and can kind of crack which i'm going to show you here on this gucci bag now in a way there's not too much you can do about that this gucci bag i think i bought back in uh 2007 so that's really old as well so one bags like that i have this one louis vuitton in particular it never came with any stuffing because it's not a bag that's actually got any structure it's quite like a loose bag that it's it's a ho is it a hobo or a tote or something i don't know came with nothing in it and when i stored it it just collapses into nothing and then you end up in the monogram you end up with sort of bends and corners and edges and then the longer you leave it sometimes you can find that those edges can leave a dent a crinkle or they can eventually start to kind of um crack along the edges i only know this because i actually had that happen with a gucci bag so what i did was i used bubble wrap again another really bad thing to do because yes although the bag keeps its shape bubble wrap is because it's plastic as well is even worse than tissue paper for not being good when it comes to air circulation that again can attract moisture and it does the thing that i told you about where it actually can make the inside of the bag smell so don't do that I hope you've enjoyed this and that there have been some things in it that have helped you. I think the, th the bottom line is, with this stuff, if you're into it, it costs us a lot of money. And what you don't want to do is go and take out a bag one day that you haven't used in a few months and the thing's sticky or it smells or it's got colour transfer on it where it was lying up against a bag that was darker than it. There are things you don't want to have happen. So anything I can tell you here that I have made a mistake with, I thought it would be quite helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.